Welcome to Black Balls, where we highlight and celebrate entrepreneurship in the Black community. I'm your host, Michelle Forbes, and today I have with me founder of Project Positive, Damon Dinksworth Holly. How are you today? Crowd goes crazy. Crowd goes crazy. Thank you. Happy. Everything's Not- blessings. Too, too blessed to be stressed right now. You know what I mean? I hear that. I definitely hear that. So, um, founder of Project Positive, uh, what is Project Positive and how did it uh, come into existence? So Project Positive is a Philadelphia based dance organization that uses hip hop um, to inspire the youth in our community. Um, It's mostly led by hip hop dance and all the styles of hip hop dance being the biggest influence on today's youth. Uh, I believe I started the program Um, back in 2010, but I really started um, really bringing it out into the public, into the streets, I'm going to say probably March, March, probably May of 2014. Okay. That's when I I had came back from a big uh, tour with the State Department, with the dance company that I was with at the time. And uh, we did did a month-long tour in Europe. So we went to like Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Russia and just toured the different orphanages and places where they had hip hop competitions or may or not have known about hip hop. Um, okay. so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, I know you said that you that you brought it um, to the streets in you know around March 2014. So what did that look like? What did you mean bringing it to the streets versus what it was before? Um, so I believe before uh, before coming back from the, from Europe. I believe it was just an idea Um, and it was just like, it was more so of us just like street performing and Mm -hmm. taking the proceeds. I I, I thought the project positive came in when I I thought of the idea to take the proceeds we're making from street performing and putting it into hip hop workshops and local rec centers in our communities that we lived in us being Mm -hmm. at risk youth, us being at risk youth when we were younger and kind of making dance, not only our, career but jobs but also ways to channel our stress and energy that we was going through our neighborhood so uh I wanted to start the program and I wasn't even really I didn't even really think it would take money but it kind of like just happened overnight the mindset just kind of started carrying throughout the whole team and we started taking the uh, proceeds and just putting it more towards um what we needed for like workshops uniforms performances travel things of that nature And then um, it got to the point where I actually got a grant from the Knight Foundation uh, or team uh, for helping build a prospering, caring community. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, That's really dope. Okay. So um, what were you looking to accomplish with Project Positive? You mean like the the yeah, like, when you I guess say that do you mean like what what were you when you set out to do it I know you mentioned you know being an at-risk youth yourself and really wanting to touch yeah. that um that population so I yeah. was wondering you know what about uh what about that experience uh, made you made you bring it to Project Positive what were you looking to accomplish uh, I think it was lack thereof um not just in my own community but in a lot of my peers communities like Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us are dancers or started dancing or started in a drum line or drum team of some sort. Just um, a lot of us came from backgrounds as kids where we were like, this is when like, I guess school programming was a little bit better. There was a lot of after school programming. Mm-hmm. There was a lot to do with basketball or music or art. Um, and I think over the years, uh, like even when I graduated from high school, let's say 2007, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of those after school programs started to die out. You know what I mean? Even before I graduated. So I kind of wanted to uh, create a catalyst for kids for after school. Um, one, to help them with their life skills because mm-hmm. dan- um, learning dance and traveling with dance and dance becoming like my career. Um, mm-hmm. I learned a lot of life skills um, through touring and teaching and learning things about dance and becoming a professional. I learned a lot of life skills that helped me along the way um, to keep me from being locked up or keep me for being in jail, keep me hanging with the wrong crowd, or if something happened to me in the streets, keep me from wanting to retaliate. So it was a lot of the things that uh, I started noticing within myself that I could be um, turning into programs or putting that energy into a program to where I could we could explain to kids that 
if we could do it, you could do it too. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Um, bear with me one second, man. I gotta, I gotta make a slight adjustment. Take your time. I would interrupt it. So, um, thank you for that answer. I was about to say, as far as, you know, uh, discussing the different skills you were able to learn through, you know, um, dancing and being within the community. <laughs> you got a background <laughs> change. I, I dig you. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Gotta switch it up. <laughs> Keep it the same. It up. I see you. I see you. So, um, you've been a, a staple, not just you, but you know the whole Project Positive team um, have been a staple in Philly festivals for years. So, what connections did you need to build in order to become a festival fixture? Mm, so, if I could be honest, we're like still. Um, working with, well, we're working before the pandemic. We're still working to become actual festival fixtures with some, okay. some of these. But to be honest, all of the build has been organic. Like, like I said, we started street performing. Um, a mentor of mine that taught me the finer business aspects of street performing. I brought that to Philly. And for the last like 10 years, I've just been like trying to well, actually implementing uh, basically a business structure on street performing. Mm -hmm. And basically where we could take the proceeds and other dancers from other communities can um, chip in and pitch in to what we call our dance community. Um, okay. But for the, remind me your question, it's all straight too far off subject. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, you, you guys have been, and I guess when I say fixture, I mean, um, it seems like you guys have always been there. You know, we, we so yeah. constantly see you um, around festivals. So I was just wondering, you know, how you built, you know, the connections to be able to do that. Okay, so yeah, um, what we do is street performing is a part of uh, a part of the life skills portion is communication, mm -hmm. connecting with your community and the businesses in, in your community. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's a part of the life skills portion that we do where we teach um, not just our youth but our um, young adults too who are mm -hmm. coming up and growing up. So we kind of teach them the soul ties in the community, just like the Girl Scouts would if uh, when the Girl Scouts go to sell cookies and they're teaching girls about, um, you know, economics and business and communication, community through selling cookies. Um, right. We don't have cookies, so we package ourselves and we're basically the cookies. So right. um, <laughs> from dancing, from singing to art to um, music, mostly dance and performing, but mm. from like stunts, tricks, flips, not only that, like, uh, break dance has just been deemed the biggest, or no, it's just been deemed uh, an Olympic sport now. Wow. It'll, so it'll be, break dancing will be in the Olympics for 2024. Wow. So I when it comes to like, awesome. that's amazing. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's what I'm pushing with my organization because one, people don't know about it. Two, the people that have been doing this for years, if it's like the bar has been raised and we're being, we're being put up there with like the best athletes in the world now. Like, mm -hmm. so we're being put up there with the Michael Jordans, with the Muhammad Ali's. Like, we're going to be able to have, we're going to be able to have people um, now to say for our next generation to look back and say, yo, this person did something great in a time where it, history was being made. Like, right. I'm, and man, Abdullah, I'm really glad to like be alive in this time because it's almost like, um, you know, seeing a black president for the first time or yeah. uh, I don't know. It to me is just like so surreal that yeah. it's like finally the time has come and it's come in a time where like nothing's going on really. But yeah. it's like we, we, we always used to say like dancers run the world, man. Like think about it like every artist, you know that's big, major popping, was a dancer at one point. Yeah, that is you, true. I feel like a lot of people yeah. don't know that that's how they got their break. Facts. So for like, yeah. for what we do at the festivals, it was more so a thing of um, having a better crowd control, more people. We know we can make a certain amount, a, a better quota. We know we could put the percentage of this quota towards this and really make things happen. So we knew that. Yeah just going out on a regular day in Center City was a big difference from a festival up in Mania or a festival mm -hmm. down, you know, like a Dune Day or the street festival. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and they had all of these, and, and they do this annually. We figured that was a great way to one, uh, get communicate with our community that we're out here, spread mm -hmm. awareness of what we're doing, and also maintain um, 
like maintain fundraising opportunities and maintain putting ourselves be making ourselves tangible to be to be able to get booked or to be yeah. able to uh, class or to be able to come out and just um, even if it wasn't to get booked, even if it was just like a community center or school that always saw us on the train, wanted to see us, didn't really have the money for us to come out, things like yeah. that. That was how uh, the grant that we had got from the Knight Foundation helped me to really make that kind of thing happen. We was in more rec centers in different areas. We were, uh, I was able to pay my guys for shows that people weren't able to pay us for. Like mm-hmm. it was just a lot of things that, that, that helped out and it kind of changed the whole mindset of what we were doing. Okay. Awesome. So there, there's two things that you mentioned that, um, that intrigued me. One, that business piece. How hard was it to bring that business piece into, you know, the art form that you already um, had spent so much time cultivating? How difficult was it to marry those two things? Uh, like I said, a lot of things happen organically, but I, I'm going to yeah. say that's the hardest transition I've endured. Like, I'm still enduring it to this day. Yeah. Like, business and it's I think it's more so it's easier when you really love it though Mm -hmm. like really love what you're doing it makes it more easier to do um but you still go through the trials tribulations it's that much harder too because now it's nobody telling you what to do how to do it you know what I mean you kind of got it on your own but I think that's that's a part of the journey too like um but now I'm even learning now like it's things that I don't have to really do that I was doing before. It's things that like I could just fall back and really attack in a different manner. And if it doesn't work out, it work out. You know what I mean? Like I used to be really keen on things not working out mm-hmm. so much and it, it, it just not happening the way we wanted it to happen. I would really take hits on my character and confidence on certain things. But then I learned like this is what this is the this is the grind. Like this is what yeah. This is what Walmart, Amazon, and all these big companies, <laughs> Costco, and all these huge companies that's huge right now. You go to like looking for a surplus of things. They probably yeah. started in a basement or worse than where I started. Like, so I ain't yeah. even going to act like it's not a part of the journey. You know what I mean? Yep. And that that's a that's a thing. And it's also one of the reasons why I, I love doing Black Boss because it does, it normalizes it. It is a part of the journey. You know, mm. I feel like people get um, people get uh, deterred when things don't go exactly the way, you know, they think they're supposed to go or they foresaw them going and they spend all this time right. and energy to get it to go that way. But right. the major thing about entrepreneurship is that you have to problem solve your way through, you know, figuring out what your business is going to be and for the survival and, and thriving of whatever you've created. So it is like, it's, it's totally, it's a totally normal process to, to take those steps and, you know, fumble and turn back around and go forward. And it's all, it's just a part of the game. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll be better for it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It, it builds character. It builds, um, it, it definitely builds you up. Like it, yeah. it gives you, um, it gives you an armor, so to speak. Like when you go through these things and you come, you know, come through these trials, tribulations, on the other side, successful in your own right. Like, mm-hmm. um, you you definitely build yourself up in a lot of ways. Yeah, sure. totally, totally right. agree. So I I, uh, I remember you guys um, on the train. <laughs> so could you? And that then that may be a lot of people with Philly's introduction to you on the uh, on the train on the on the sub. Uh, Septa, we are in Philly for anybody watching. So we talk about Septa. Back. <laughs> and um, so how much of that then did you view as you guys just having fun doing your thing? I mean, they, they used to flip over things, flip over chairs, swing from the bars. It was an entire Cirque du Soleil show within like, <laughs> within like a five by five space. It was incredible. <laughs> but um, right. how much of that did, did you view, did you guys view of just having fun? And how much of that was marketing for Project Positive? Um, to be honest, the, the, the at the start, it was all just fun. Like, okay. it was all just fun. I mean, we knew, I knew we could make money off of it, but uh-huh. it, it, it got to the point where the money was, the money wasn't even like an issue, like, cause everybody was just wanting to get on and wanting to be a part of the wave. Wanting, it was to the point where like, it would get to the point where like, people would come out and not even worry about getting paid. Just the fact that they could be out there with, share the energy and 
really just all day. This all this. Some people were in all that. This is what we do. Like, yeah. Is like y'all do this, like you see it on t- on maybe um, social media, you see it in New York a lot, you see it like just in places where like cities they it's major, but Philly there's not a lot. I mean, there's not a lot of crews or teams that's been doing it for the last 10 years. I even got like a kids crew called Crowd Pleasers, they've been holding it down. Like um, it's a guy named uh Donnie Thompson and his mm-hmm. kids, but he was one of the people that locked up with me for like 17 hours for separate. Uh, except the police had locked us up for performing on the train. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we dorm with this stuff because, like, I'm to the, I'm at the point now where I really want to get with some like city officials and um, you know, some policymakers and make something happen for you know the dancers in the city or the artists in the city. There's like, there's, it seems like everything's being sucked out of the arts in the city, and this city is big yeah. on the art. You know what I mean? And I huge. Yeah. A part, part of the bigger issue, um, mm-hmm. besides the pandemic and COVID, would really just be funding our artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, fuck, like we run the we run the game so much so to where it's like we in every single community, we're every color and creed, where like we run the we run the ability for other businesses to stay up and running. Like, just not even just dancers, but just people abroad. You know what I mean? People of color, people of minority, like. We, we run it. We got it. It's time. For, this is my portion and this is my contribution to the world, basically, like, probably with Project Positive. Like, I love it. I was just talking about this yesterday, like, stuff for love. I was to die today or tomorrow. Like, I think I would be, um, I think, I believe strongly that this would be carried on to the next level. It yeah. sucks that it sucks that you got to think like that. Like, I got to die for my stuff to get to the biggest level. But now, yeah. like, a party you kind of a party you die is doing this kind of stuff mm-hmm. sometimes, and um, unless you stay true in your heart and it's really in your heart to do this, a party you will die from from chasing your dream or chasing your goal. You get tired of it, you don't want to do it. You might it be days you don't want to wake up, you don't want you don't uh, you don't want to wake up and do what you did yesterday because it's like I'm just gonna keep going through the same cycle. But yeah. the more the more you put into your mind with change, the more you surround yourself with people that's going not even the people but the energy. That's going to um, help you be conducive and bring you peace so that you can you can really find out and navigate what it is you, you want to do to be successful. Yeah, I, I 110 percent agree with that. You know, that that piece of um, pouring, pouring the inspiration back into yourself. Like if you don't have that or you don't have the, you know, the people around you to, to support in that and to remind you of, you know, what you're doing it for. It can be it can be difficult, it can be daunting, exhausting, all those things. So I, I 110% agree with that. So with, with um, the founding of Project Positive, what do you feel um, since being on your entrepreneurial journey, your biggest wins and biggest, I say uh, I say losses just for wins and losses, but losses are really lessons. Cause like we said yeah. before, you know, entrepreneurship is about problem solving. So what right. have been your biggest wins and your biggest um, losses or lessons since founding Project Positive? Mm. I think I want to say one of the biggest wins is, uh, I can't speak to one like situation because there's a lot of wins. Yeah. We have wins, I ain't gonna lie, especially this year. Well, like, fantastic, congratulations. Um, but now nah, I think the biggest win mindset wise would be like how people see us, like what mm-hmm. people see of us that we may not see. And when we hear from them, it's like, it's a confirmation that we're doing the right thing mm-hmm. or we right path. I yeah. think it's I think the big lesson I could take from doing this is like the name, like the, the, in the, in the weight and the energy it carries. Mm-hmm. And how people see us outside of us seeing ourselves. I think that just holds us, reminds us like the not to keep doing it, keep strong. I think I diff- always think of different ways to becoming, coming different. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest win because like even this year alone, we was on, dang, well, between 2020, like end of 2020 and now, we've been mm-hmm. on WYY. Uh, we've been on Channel 5 in London. Uh, mad people, we still doing like parties and different events in the city. Like, it's almost like 
nothing changed. It's almost like it's about to get better for us. Awesome. Hopefully for everybody, because I feel like this this crisis pandemic thing kind of helped us scale back and be like, all right, let's cross our T's, dot our I's. So at the other end of this, we could be like, yo, we'd be better than we ever was. Yeah. We took the took time we were given the time and we took that time to really um recalibrate what we're doing mm-hmm. go back to board back to the basics you know what i mean and just stick yeah. to stay connect. like um i say one of the biggest losses or lessons mm-hmm. um dang man i'm just <laughs> i think being prepared mm. uh i think uh because okay. i think uh, this whole time along, we just been rolling with the punches. Yeah. And I think this time has taught us to be prepared for what's to come because um, we start noticing and doing this, doing it, doing business in this. It's like, we not just hitting the streets to get donations, to put up to ideas anymore. We yeah. like have actual tangible goals and things we need to do and attain to from building up to this point. So yeah. I think what, one of the lessons and, and what we've been doing, what I've been doing, what, you know, uh, I think it's more so to just stay prepared. Like, don't let up and stay consistent. Like, yeah. um, and check yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because like, I've had to check myself. Like, I had to check myself a few times over this pandemic. But I, don't, I mean, who, who doesn't need to? Who doesn't need to check really? themselves? Every time? Uh, but I think yeah. recognize. Is is it's this is a this is a win and a loss for me because uh, this is a win and a lesson for me because um, it's been times where I don't think I approach things the best way. Okay. Or it may have been times where I uh, reacted the wrong way. Okay. And knowing that, I think the best lesson I could. Uh, go on moving forward or to teach by example is to it doesn't take anything from you not to say anything right then right then and there mm. I think uh, nowadays we're that, getting caught that is such a Philly lesson I'm sorry I don't mean to cut you off but I feel like <laughs> that is such within Philly culture to learn like <laughs> to not say anything right here does not take anything away from the person that you are so I just we, gotta used to, be we used to saying things at the height of our energy you know what I mean mm-hmm. and Especially living in Philly, I've learned that it's just a it, it's 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 a thing, and yeah. I learned I, I had to learn I had to learn to check myself because I'll be subject yeah. to it a lot, and I find myself like um, not arguing with people, but just having little catty just, just disagreements, like just mm-hmm. because I'm person energy take my energy to the next level. So I'm yeah. learning how to check myself. Um, <laughs> I take notes because it's like something that's really bothering me. I gotta attack this later like I can't even really let this slow me down right now yeah, so let's yeah. I'm, I'm learning how to um I'm learning how to definitely I don't think call it compartmentalizing things like yeah, yeah. So, yep. put things where they belong and I'll mm-hmm. get to that later like <laughs> so, right right yeah I, hear I think that. yeah got you so what mark um would you like to leave behind with project positive you gotta stand for something or fall for anything, especially in this time. Like, for instance, I seen um Texas opening up their city like completely, like no mask, businesses back yeah. open, and it's almost to me like, dang, like, is this is a state out there that's taking a stand against the whole uh, what we're going through with the pandemic thing? Yeah, and it's it's like they taking their survival in their own hands, like as a city. Or their, whoever the governor is, and that just let, that I saw that yesterday, and just reminded me, like, yo, you got to stand for something or fall for anything out here. Yeah, and that's one of our biggest models. Mm. We're positive, along with that, is peace. It's positive energy allows constant elevation. And one of our goals now is we 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 trying to hold on. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. Peace. Peace. P a c e stands for positive energy allows constant elevation. I like so that. You, you constantly surround mm. yourself with positive energies. You constantly be elevating yourself to the next level because you'll always be thinking and your um your endorphins will be thinking, your synapses will be popping, you'll always be like elevating yeah. to the next thing. You'll always be right. elevating to the thought instead of like mm-hmm. it being downtrodden and people that are going through th- it's hard because sometimes it'd be our own family and closest friends. You know what yeah. I mean? So hard to 
not recognize it, but it'd be hard to, uh, how can I say? Sometimes it's hard to give tough love to the ones we love the most. You yeah. know what I mean? For sure. I've been, I've been dealing with that a lot lately, just within my team and just in my period. But mm-hmm. I've been, it's, I feel like everything has been a te- Everything now is like a test to what you're be, what you're preparing yourself for. So now we're preparing for greatness. We want, we want, we want to get a studio for not just ourselves, but the dance community, like, okay. and not just studio, like warehouse, training center type time. Uh-huh. So it's, so it's like it's housing, breaking. It's housing gymnastics. We doing sports. I want to. My goal is to get an Olympic mm-hmm. training. Center. I want to open a Project Positive Olympic Training Center. If we, in 2024, we're going to be yeah. in Olympic, start training now. Start training, sure. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's for and sure. The craziest people don't even know about this. So yeah. when it comes, over the years, people going to hear about it. But when it comes, people going to be like, well, why didn't anybody tell me? Why, why isn't this being broadcast? Yeah, uh, so it's, it's, it's a part of my job. And everybody else who does this for real, to take to 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 spread the awareness do mm-hmm. what we're doing. and um just help take it to the next level man you never know like shoot i could be the next olympic training coach or you I, I be thinking, never know what's gonna happen five ten years from now like Absolutely. i could train the next, i could train the next gold medal Olymp- olympic winner and they be a break yep. dancer yep. <laughs> that's Absolutely. huge that's the big, and dance is one of the biggest influences on today's youth. Mm-hmm. I agree. Hip hop, music, dance, yeah. art. Yeah. Yep. I was about to say, you know, it, it, you mentioned two things, you know, having that exposure and having that preparation. There's, you, mm-hmm. could, you could never predict what could happen in five to 10 years with those two things, you know, you getting all the information you need to accomplish something and then being prepared to accomplish mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the way to go. So I, I really appreciate you uh, being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. No, thanks for having me. Awesome. Absolutely. I, I was just saying I need to do more interviews, man. More. Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying. I'm out of, I got a lot of music. Myself, last year, I've been working on music. Okay. I got a lot of music about to drop. Um, me and my DJ, Mike Cannon, he's been helping me engineer and produce stuff. So we got a lot of different sounds we're working on. Yeah. Between you have, that, you have a date drop or? yeah, say it again. Okay. I said, do you have do you have a date yet, or you guys still working? Um, so my goal is to start dropping after the twentieth. Okay. Um, I don't have an exact date yet because we were dealing, we're finalizing some some things, but we got like a hundred plus unreleased tracks right now. I'm not working. Okay. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. I was just telling them the other day, like, yeah, we gotta stop for a second and start putting projects together, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. packaging it and releasing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to say, start killing, killing, killing. Yeah, because well, you got this project killing. positive stuff about to drop. He said, What? Cool. All uh, this project yeah. positive stuff about to drop. Yep. Yeah. Get all this out. out with the old and with the new. Indeed. I dig yeah. it. I dig it. But yeah, there's, two, there's two things uh, left I need you to do for me. Uh, first thing, please tell the people where they can find you, how they can support you. Facts. Positive and for music. Okay. Live for the 215. It's your boy Dinksworth. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Dinksworth or follow us on Instagram at Project Positive, inspiring the youth through hip hop dance. Uh, you can check out my music that I have out now on all streaming platforms. Just type in Dinksworth. Uh, we got some new drops coming for y'all, but go check out what you missed out on. Um, shoot, man. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Let's keep doing this. Keep Thank rocking. You. Remember, remember, hip hop is healthy, independent people helping other people. So as mm. long as we stay in unity, we stay tied. Remember, united we stand, divided we fall. So keep your peace signs together. I that was a whole that was a whole word, brother. <laughs> that, that was a whole, that was a whole I've been, word. I've been working on I've been working on my interview, John. Yeah. So I ain't gonna, I that, was, that was nice. I felt inspired. I'm but the, se- the second thing uh, I need you to do, man, is Black Boss tradition. I have all the uh, Black Boss participants say their name and then say that they're Black Boss. Mm. I am Damon Dinksworth Holly, and I am a Black Boss. I dig it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for being here with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and I, I did want to, you know, give you, give you your flowers really quickly and what you said, you know, um, not, not for no, you know, bad, bad juju or nothing, but if something was, you know, to, to unfortunately happen, I do feel like Project Positive would carry through. I think you've done a fantastic job with its visibility, with um, the energy around it, the positive energy, you know, I've seen how not only kids respond to it, but also how adults respond to it. You know, I feel like you guys are very much sewn into Philly culture. I feel like it's a it's a pleasure anytime people run into you and are able to get the Project Positive experience. And, you know, thank you for that. You said you started this in 2010, it's 2021. Thank you for your diligence, man. Thank, no, thank, thank you. Yeah, it's you. You you're so well, yeah. you like you like bike life. Like it's certain things so so in the Philly like you expect to see you certain can't come to life. Philly. And do they wear something positive? You you can't come to Philly no more without seeing dancers on the train. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't come to Philly without seeing kids dancing on the corners no more. Like mm-hmm. and we. I'm not gonna say we started that wave. You know what I'm saying? But for the last ten years, we've been consistently holding that down. Absolutely. And, I, and I, I don't know any other group crew organization that's really been doing that like that. And I, I say that to say, because I want to bam and partner with more crews and more organizations. Yeah. We can get this Olympic training center on point. It's warehouses, yeah. that nature out there right now that we could just be helping, like getting into and start cleaning up and start putting all our resources in and make something happen for our community for real. That's Absolutely. my main, to be honest. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm not gonna take up any more time, any more of your time, man. I, I really appreciate you. Yo, thank you for having me and let's do this again. Like yeah, real. well, you I'm all set. We already we already tied done. We'll catch up. Yeah, we tied <laughs> talk soon. For sure. For sure. <laughs> right, sounds good. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, man. Oh, bless Queen. I'm about to go do some um actually, yo, check out the Sixers game today. We'll be on six. We got a game yeah, today. Yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah. Sixers first third. You know I'm saying? If you don't know, check out the game. I will be in the building. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They find letting fans back in there. But if you ain't going to be in there, check it out. ESPN. You know I'm saying? So what was it? Is it uh, the dump team? You the um, so, team? so, yeah, I'm on the it's six, 76ers entertainment team now. But it, oh, it's comprised of the Dixers, Dunkers, um, the drum team, the Stixers. Okay. Um, and the man got Franklin, and we're all one team now. Oh, but I've been, I've been working with them for like six seasons, six seven seasons. Yeah, and I've been choreographing with them. They've been, it's a great organization, honestly. So they've been, so I'm glad they have been taking yeah. what we it, this being with the Sixers takes what I do with this up to a whole new levels. Like not gonna lie. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that's super dope. <laughs> blessings to you, man. Blessings, oh. blessings. So bless, thanks for having me. This was awesome. Man. We'll talk. No problem. All right, man. I, I'll catch you. Facts, facts, Queen. Keep it rock. Keep it rock. Black ball. Yeah. Rock. Absolutely. I don't, I don't do it quite like hit it, hit it, spin it. <laughs> All right, All right. Dick. Love, love. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was uh Damon Dinksworth Holly. Um Dink. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me, man. Um, you really are, you know, a staple. You and and everything who everyone who has collaborated uh, with you in the creation of Project Positive. Um, I really enjoyed you guys' work. You know, I really enjoyed you guys' expression. I think it's a big part of um, Philly. What Philly is, what Philly stands for, and um, just the just the arts. I think you guys are a fantastic representation. It's been nothing but positivity anytime. You know, I've seen you guys perform or been able to run into you. So, Dink, thank you again. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Please, for full episodes, check out uh, Black Ball Certified on YouTube to continue the celebration of um, Black entrepreneurship. You can check me out at Black Balls underscore certified. I make little clips of the different interviews. Um, And also on Facebook at Black Ball Certified. So that's where you can find me on social media. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much. I love doing this. It's so much fun. (laughs) Um, And that's all. Thanks, guys. Peace.